Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll be showing you the investing strategy of the great Michael Burry, famed investor from the big short and legendary value investor. I'll be going through his old letters and blogs to dissect his investing style. And at the end of the video, I'll be going through his portfolio to see what he's currently holding. If you enjoyed the video, please consider hitting that like button as it really helps support the channel. So let's get into it. Dr. Michael Burry first started his professional investing journey in 2000, after switching from medicine, where he was awarded his doctorate from Vanderbilt University of Medicine. He still invested back then, but only as a hobby. When Burry started his first hedge fund, back in November 2000, it turned out to be wonderful timing, as the dot-com bubble was just beginning to burst and the entire market was about to go into freefall. As an investor, Michael Burry uses many different investing styles to achieve absolute returns. He short sells businesses he believes to be overvalued, he buys compounders with durable moats and high returns on capital, and then holds them for long periods like Buffett. But more than any of them, he's a true Ben Graham style value investor. In 2001, Burry wrote a blog post for MSN Money, where he outlined his entire investing philosophy from start to finish. He says his strategy isn't very complex. He tries to buy shares of unpopular companies when they look like roadkill, and sell them when they've been polished up a bit. And managing the portfolio is just as important as stock picking. So basically, he likes to buy 50 cent dollars and then sell them for 90 cents. And managing the portfolio is rotating the 90 cent dollars into new 50 cent dollars over and over again. This might sound familiar because it's also the strategy Nick Sleep used early in his career at Nomad. When searching for 50 cent dollars, Burry says his weapon of choice as a stock picker is research. And that is critical to understand the company's value before laying down a dime. He believes investors in the habit of turning over the most stones will find success in choosing investments. All of his stock picking is based on the concept of margin of safety, as introduced in the book Security Analysis by Graham and Dodd. When he looks for 50 cent dollars, he also says he doesn't require catalysts, which are specific events that push a 50 cent dollar back up to a dollar. He says sheer outrageous value is enough. Burry doesn't care about the general level of the market, and he doesn't put restrictions on potential investments. Quite simply, if he can find value, it becomes a candidate for the portfolio. If you've been around the investing world a little while, you've probably heard the saying that the more volatile a company's stock is, the riskier it is as an investment, or that volatility and risk are the same thing. Burry says this belief also relies on theories that assume security analysis is a waste of time, courtesy of efficient markets, and that the correct view on risk is that it's minimized through respectful business evaluation and not minimizing volatility. Burry's view on risk is about always putting emphasis on preventing permanent loss of capital or downside protection. And he also diversifies his holdings across many industries. So if any number of events occur, he doesn't lose a significant portion of his client's money. Valuation is one of the cornerstones of value investing. But as a Graham style value investor buying 50 cent dollars, Burry places valuation as the highest priority on his investing checklist. He doesn't care if they're good or bad businesses. He doesn't care about moats. He just cares if they're cheap and offer a big margin of safety. One of the techniques he uses to screen for extremely undervalued companies is by using a stock screener and screening for companies using the enterprise value to EBITDA ratio. EV to EBITDA is a simple valuation metric, much like the PE ratio, except it uses enterprise value instead of the stock price and EBITDA instead of EPS. This is simply a way of filtering out all the fairly priced and overvalued companies, so you're left with only cheap businesses. Once a business passes his loose screen, he looks deeper and tries to determine a more specific price and value for the business. He does this by taking into account off-balance sheet items and true free cash flow. When it comes to buying stocks, we need to revisit a point I mentioned before about volatility that's crucial to Burry's strategy. Because volatility does not equal risk, Burry says you can use volatility to your advantage when buying businesses. In his 2001 shareholder letter, he says he gave a short talk at the Bank of America to a room of around 200 wealthy clients. And he stated unequivocally that risk is not defined by volatility, rather by ill-conceived investment. Then, the gentleman who followed gave a talk about how by minimizing volatility, you reduce risk, which is the polar opposite of what Burry said. After the talk, Burry sat alone while the other bloke was quite popular, which tells you everything you need to know about Wall Street's view on volatility. <laughs> <laughs> Burry's opinion, which is similar to Warren Buffett and Nick Sleep, is against the general consensus, but it's critical to understand when using Burry's strategy or any active investing strategy for that matter. 
Burry says that he strives to discover the proverbial dollar bill selling for 50 cents, preferably with enough volatility that he has the opportunity to buy it for 40 cents or less. In this way, he views volatility as his friend. It makes sense because if you know a business is worth a dollar, having the opportunity to buy it at 40 cents presents opportunity and not risk. And this is a principle shared not just by Burry, but by Nick Sleep, Charlie Munger, and Warren Buffett as well. I just want to quickly touch on short selling, because it's probably what Burry is most known for despite not doing it that frequently. In his 2002 shareholder letter, Burry says he approaches short selling in an opportunistic manner that's in many ways the mirror image of going long stocks, but he says he doesn't like the math of shorting as well as the risks. Because of these factors, Burry's version of short selling is considered special situation investing, and he says the majority of the fund's performance will come from its long positions. So that legendary bet against the housing market, as depicted in the big short, was just an opportunistic bet from an occasional short seller, which makes it even better. He's such a smart guy and I should probably hate him because I'm a Tesla shareholder and he's had multiple short positions against Tesla. But it doesn't really bother me and I still like him a lot. It was said that you would destroy this and not join them. Michael Burry. Now, that's better. In all honesty though, the short position doesn't bother me because I feel like Burry is a short to medium term investor. I know he considers himself to be a long term investor, and he is compared to most of Wall Street who only holds stocks for a few months. But most of his investments have short holding periods of 5 years or less, compared to someone like Charlie Munger or Nick Sleep, where the holding period is sometimes decades. Because of the nature of Burry's strategy, the longer he has to hold 50 cent dollars, the worse his performance will be. Because the longer you hold a business, the more the returns are linked with the return the business gets on itself and the reinvestment rate. In regards to how this relates to Tesla, I feel like Burry is just betting that Tesla is overvalued in the short term and it sure looks that way at first glance. If you value Tesla in a traditional discounted cash flow with conservative growth rates like a lot of people, Tesla does look egregiously overvalued. But at the end of the day, we both have different strategies and different holding periods. So it makes sense we come to different conclusions. And this is why investing is more art than science. If we take a look at Burry's current stock portfolio, according to Stock Circle, which was previously cheaper than Guru, all 10 of Burry's positions are new positions and have just been started in the first quarter of 2022. His top holding right now is Signacorp, which is a healthcare and insurance company based in the US. In second, he has Discovery Inc., which is the TV network that owns the Discovery Channel and Animal Planet. Next up, we have Booking Holdings. I don't know why it says tobacco manufacturing on the site, because a quick Google search shows they're the online travel brand. Next, we have Ovintiv. I think I'm saying that right. And Ovintiv is an oil and natural gas producer in Canada. The next holding is a very well-known company, which has gone through a bit of a rough patch. And that is of course Meta, aka Facebook. After a bad earnings report, the company got hammered to under $200 a share. And Burry obviously feels like Meta has dropped far enough that he has a nice margin of safety at the current price. He also did the same with Alphabet. If we look at the chart, where it shows his previous buys, we can see it's not the first time he's bought Alphabet. He bought even more shares back in 2019, and quickly sold them again just a few months later. And this is kind of what I meant when I said compared to Buffett and Sleep, Michael Burry is really a short to medium term investor. And if we look at Meta as well, it's a treadmill of activity. You have a buy and a sell, then another buy and another sell, and just after he sold, he bought again. I imagine Burry knows exactly what he's doing, and I'm not criticizing at all. But this isn't the behavior of a long term investor. As was the case in the past, both his Meta and Alphabet positions will probably be sold by halfway through next year. And if we quickly skim over the rest of the smaller positions in the portfolio, we have Nexstar Media, Stellantis, Global Payments, and Sportsman's Warehouse. There's one more holding that's pretty easy to miss, because you have to click into Options to see it, and that is a put contract against Apple. A put contract is a financial option that raises in value when the price of the stock falls, and it's the opposite of a call option, which rises when the stock increases in value. So basically, Burry is shorting Apple stock in the short term, and based on his buy price and the current price, he seems to be doing pretty well with that one. So that's Michael Burry's stock and options portfolio. And like I said, it'll probably be completely different this time next year based on his investing strategy. If you've watched the video all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching. And if you're still bored, I'll put another video up in the corner that I think you'll like. Let me know in the comments below if there's any other investors you want me to do a video on. For those that express interest in wanting to join the community Discord server, my Patreon is now active if you want to check it out. If you sign up, you get complete access to our community Discord server where you can ask questions, share ideas, and help others in the community become better and wiser investors. If you want to check it out, there'll be a link in the description box below. And as always, this video is not financial advice, and I'm not a financial advisor. 
So please always do your own research before making any investment decisions. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.